Hello, I hope you're doing well. So before I get into my January wrap up, I just wanted to say hello and welcome to the 60 new subscribers that my channel has got since I uploaded my favorites of 2018 video. As you can see, this is not a channel of frequent videos, but hopefully when I do upload a video, we can have some amazing chats down in the comments. So the first book that I read in 2019 was The Dry by Jane Harper. I don't tend to read a lot of sort of detective murder mystery type books. I enjoy watching them on TV, but I think the formula like nature of them makes me get a bit bored when I'm reading them but I know there is film being made of the dry and it is such a big Australian hit right now that I was really curious to read it and also my mum who is a big fan of murder mysteries really enjoyed her books and I bought her Jane Harper's latest book for Christmas so I was kind of reading some Jane Harper alongside with my mum over the Christmas holidays. The Dry starts off with a character called Aaron Falk who is a policeman but he mainly works with financial crimes in Melbourne. He's visiting his old hometown in country Victoria to go to the funeral of one of his school friends. And I really loved the way this book started off, just sort of throwing you into the deep end and introducing you straight away to a country town where everyone knows everyone and there's a certain animosity towards Aaron and we slowly find out why that is. I think Jane Harper's best known for her amazing descriptions of the Australian landscape. She really evokes the Australian rural farmland country area amazingly well. It's the height of summer when the book is set and just you can feel the heat pouring off the pages. It's so familiar to anyone who's lived in Australia, even if you've lived in a city, that feeling of the relentless Australian summer. With the mystery itself, I was definitely kept engaged. I think I read the last quarter of the book pretty much in one sitting. I did guess who did it, but that's mainly because there aren't that many characters. By the end, there are only really a couple of options left as to who could have done the murder. I'm very curious to see what the film adaptation is like. I know Eric Banner has been cast as the main character and that's kind of annoyed me a bit because Aaron Falk in the book is described as a ginger and it seems very unfair that this ginger representation is being taken away from us. And Eric Banner is also a very handsome man and Aaron Falk is definitely described as a really ordinary looking white Australian guy. I get that they want to cast someone famous because they want the film to be watched by people outside of Australia. Next I read Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This is one I picked up in an op shop last month and I just thought the cover was too good not to buy and I was sort of feeling a bit guilty about how I buy books from op shops all the time when I never get around to reading them so I decided to read this one straight away. This is a book from 1938 and it literally does cover just one whole day. At the beginning of each chapter it literally has the times in which the action in each chapter takes place. I also love that this has really cute illustrations all the way through. Miss Pettigrew is an older lady who's very poor and has never been married and is trying to get a job as a governess. However, the employment agency accidentally sends her to the apartment of this very wealthy young lady who is a singer in a nightclub and so kind of by accident Miss Pettigrew gets swept up in this world of young people and thwarted lovers. A few parts of the book have really dated. There's one section where Miss Pettigrew is talking about who the young lady Miss LaFosse should marry and she talks about how she should only marry a white person because she doesn't think the races should mix. So yeah, there are definitely parts that really stand out because of being so weirdly backwards and uncomfortable because then there are other parts that feel so modern, particularly because this book is about female friendship. Even in the end, the person who comes to the rescue to Miss Pettigrew, who sets her up for life and makes sure she doesn't have to go back to being a governess, a job that she wasn't very good at anyway, that person is Miss LaFosse. And I love that the end solution wasn't Miss Pettigrew getting married, that it was women helping other women. Next, I read The Children Act by Ian McEwan. Ian McEwan is so fascinating as a writer because every single one of his books is so different. As you all know from my favorites video, I adored Chesil Beach last year and have picked up a few of his other books since and just really not enjoyed them. My mum has quite a big selection and over Christmas I sort of read the first pages of the couple that she had and none of those first pages made me want to read more. The Children Act however, I did read the first page in the library and it did interest me so I continued reading and I did enjoy this book though not quite as much as On Chesil Beach of course. This is one of his more relatively recent books published in 2014 and it is about a lawyer called Fiona. She works as a judge in the court that mainly looks after family affairs and this case comes to her about this very sick boy who needs to get a blood transfusion but is refusing because he and his family are Jehovah's Witnesses. The boy is just a few months off turning 18. If he was 18 he would be the one in control of deciding which medical treatments he receives but because he is just underage the doctors want to step in and save his life believing that 
his parents are influencing him to make this decision. While this is happening, Fiona's husband has decided he wants to have an affair and has told her upfront about it because he does not believe he is being sexually fulfilled in their long-standing marriage. The book definitely reaches its peak when Fiona goes to meet the sick boy in the hospital and the scene between them is absolutely mesmerizing and really shows off Ian McEwan's writing skills. It's definitely a fascinating topic. I felt that Ian McEwan really presented both sides, both Fiona's point of view and the boy's point of view really well. It's kind of just one of those books where you read it and you think about it a lot. Next, I finally read the last two books in the Roman Mystery series. I've been rereading this whole 17 book series since April last year. This is a children's series of books that I absolutely loved when I was a kid. The first couple of books were published in 2001. I think I probably started reading them maybe the next year or the year after. And from then on, I bought every new book as it came out. I think they came out about two every year and the final two books were published in 2009. For some reason I never got around to reading those books. I guess I got a little bit old and unlike Harry Potter these books didn't really mature with their audience. They kind of aimed at the same age level for the whole series though a lot of really adult stuff happens in them which is why I've really enjoyed reading the first few books and why the kind of last half of the series I found not to be quite as good. I think it was the weird contrast between some of the really adult stuff that was going on, all kinds of things that happened in the Roman era. It's very historically accurate to the time, but the writing style and the way the characters talk is very much like books aimed at 10 and 11 year olds. So yeah, I think I just got too old for the books and wasn't that interested. So it's nice to finally finish off the series. The books are about four children, Flavia, who's a highborn Roman girl, Nubia, who is her slave from Africa, who she freeze very early on in the series and so they're just friends living together and then their next door neighbor Jonathan who is Jewish and Lupus who was a beggar boy who Jonathan's family kind of adopted and he doesn't have a tongue because it got cut out when he was very young. The way that each character has a point of view in the book is really well done I think and they're really very individual characters and you really feel like they're real people. And in the first few books the way that the history is integrated into the story I think is really well done. It's there as a backdrop and you do learn stuff without you really realizing it but the mystery part of it is the main focus of the stories. Later on I felt like I was purely getting a history lesson and the stories were not that interesting. It really did feel like the author Caroline Lawrence had things she wanted to talk about like she wanted to talk about the city of Alexandria in Egypt and so she was like well I'm gonna write a story there rather than starting off with the story and then seeing what history she could add into it. The friendship between the four main characters is definitely what made makes these such great reads. There is no romance between any of them so that four person friendship remains strong throughout the whole series. As I said there are definitely really adult moments that feel very weird reading them now that for some reason as a child I just didn't really notice. Especially the bits where Flavia who is an 11 year old girl and Roman girls are often married when they're about 14 or 15 but you've got this 19 year old guy professing his love to an 11 or 12 year old girl. It's really creepy in a book that is being read by modern children. I'm really glad I reread them and I'm glad I finally found out what happens. Especially the first seven books I think are just really great mysteries and really fun kids books. Tash from Tash Talks Tons and Shoei from Starlet Reader and I are planning on doing a buddy read of Doctora Quest so Tash and Shoei whenever you're ready I am ready to get started on that and to continue rereading my favourite childhood book series which I've decided is a thing I'm going to do. The last book I read in January was Convenience Store Woman by Sayata Muraka. This was such an amazingly strange little book I loved it so much. It is about a woman in her 30s called Keiko and she has been working in the same convenience store for I think it's since she was 18 years old. She very much loves the order of the convenience store. She has a lot of trouble with knowing what to say to people and knowing how to act normally. So the very structured way of working at the convenience store really suits her because she knows exactly what to do at all moments while she's working. Her family are very much in despair of her because she's not doing the normal things that women are supposed to do 
which is get married and have a family and if you haven't done that at least have a very successful career. I very much related to Keiko in that I felt at a certain point in my life that I had to learn how to interact with other human beings and it wasn't something that came particularly naturally to me. Definitely not in the extreme way of Keiko. I also loved that she was an asexual character. I would really love to see more books with asexual characters. I felt like she was what people would stereotypically think of as an asexual character in that it wouldn't occur to her to have sex. It was something she was completely uninterested in and this is definitely one way of being asexual. Obviously there is a huge spectrum with people experiencing asexuality in a variety of different ways. So it's great to have this character but it would be nice to also have some other characters who experience asexuality in a different way to balance that out. I even wrote down a quote from this book and preparing for these wrap-ups is something I don't normally do but I felt like this quote perfectly sums up what the book is about. The normal world has no room for exceptions and always quietly eliminates foreign objects. Anyone who is lacking is disposed of, so that's why I need to be cured. Unless I'm cured, normal people will expurgate me. Finally, I understood why my family had tried so hard to fix me. I feel like that can be related to anyone who feels like the way their brain functions is not in tune with the way society wants it to function. In terms of the story itself, I found the writing incredibly repetitive and I presume this was a stylistic choice but it got a little bit frustrating in such a small book that it would go on for pages kind of saying the same thing over and over again but it's such a small book it's so easy to read and I think the ideas in it are really worth thinking about and reading about. I don't normally talk about the books that I DNF because I kind of want to talk positively about books that I've enjoyed rather than negatively about ones that I didn't even finish. But I did pick up Motherhood by Sheila Hetty which has been recommended by lots of people as being really good and I think talking about the fact that I dnf it just goes to show that books can really react really differently with different people which is so fascinating when that same person can recommend a book that you also really enjoy. But with Motherhood I felt like she could have written all her ideas into a single Guardian article article and that would have been a lot more interesting than this extended way of writing ideas about motherhood in a half sort of fiction, half memoir style. I really didn't like the coin tossing thing throughout the book. She asks questions and gets a yes or no answer by tossing coins and it says at the beginning of the book that each of these answers is not something she's made up. The author actually did the coin tossing and got the answer and she let these shape the book which I just found kind of annoying. It's like you've just let this really completely random thing shape your ideas. They there was a quote I really enjoyed from it though um, and the quote goes there is a kind of sadness in not wanting the things that give so many other people their life's meaning and I didn't actually relate that to motherhood maybe that's because I work in a place where there's quite a few older women who aren't mothers and it's really just accepted that you know motherhood is a choice it's fine if you don't want kids I kind of related that more to alcohol and romantic relationships that's all I read in January thank you so much for watching and let me know your thoughts if you've read any of those books down in the comments below I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon bye